Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. Machine Mark contacted me and asked if I'd like to try one of their Clark machines. I said yes and went for the CS69D disc and belt sander. This thing was pretty heavy. The box says 45 kilos, so that's always quite a reassuring sign with the machine. I'm not going to do an unboxing video, but I will show you how this goes together. But, of course, the first thing is to unbox it. With all the bits removed and the packaging put to one side, I can then sit down and have a read through the manual before I got started. It looks like the first job was to get the base put together. So I found all the fastenings needed for that and then I could get the parts laid out for it. The base has these two sides and then four connecting pieces that go together with a bolt, a washer and a nut. I get them all put together, but to start with I just do everything up finger tight. With it all put together I can then get it stood up upside down because I need to get the feet fitted. It comes with four rubber feet, they need a bolt and a washer on them and then they can go on and a nut gets tightened up. These ones I'm actually fully tightening. I can now get the stand flipped over the correct way, give it all a good shake to make sure everything's seated properly and then I can get a ratchet and tighten everything up. The sander can now get lifted up onto the stand and it's got four holes that need to be matched up with the holes in the base. Then bolts can go through from the underside and get tightened up. This plastic belt guard needs to be installed and the bolts and washers are already on the machine so they need taking off then it can go on and the bolts and washers can go back in. It has two pulleys and they need lining up with the keys, pushing into place and then the grub screws can be tightened up. So I've made my first mistake. I've put these pulleys on so the grub screws are at the front but if they're pushed all the back, way back, it rubs on the casing. So looking at the diagram again, it should go on the other way with the grub screws at the back. And that must be why they give you this really long Allen key so you can get down there. So I'll swap these around. So now with them on the correct way and tightened down, I can get the belt installed. I start by getting it over the small wheel and then I can get it over the larger one. Everything seems to turn okay, but there's quite a lot of slack on the belt. The motor is held in place with four bolts so I can just loosen those off a little push the motor forward, tighten them down, and then that belt is much tighter. The belt guard has this inspection hole, and we'll need that in a bit. But first, I can get the plate on for the disc sander. Then I can spin it so that the grub screw lines up with that inspection hole, get the Allen key in, and tighten it down. The supplied sanding disc can then be installed. It's got an adhesive back to it, so I just need to peel that off and then I can get it positioned and pushed into place. The front cover with the dust port can now go on and it's just got five screws that hold it in place. The machine comes with a work table that can go in two different positions, so I've just got to decide where to put it and I'm going for the disc. So it goes into the hole and then there's a couple of grub screws that get tightened up with the allen key. Then the table can get slid onto that and then using the allen key again to lock it into position. The table can be angled but I'm just using a little square to set it to 90. The table has a slot in it which fits the supplied mitre gauge. 
The last piece to be installed is this stop that prevents work pieces from flying across the room when you use the belt sander. So now I can just give it a go. I get the dust port hooked up to the belt and I start sanding some pieces. The belt is great for doing large flat pieces and the end can be used for doing insider curves. The belt naturally drives the dust to the end where the hose does quite a good job of collecting it. Now I can swap the dust hose around to the front port for the disc sander and have a go at that. And you can see it really eats the wood and I can't get either the belt or the disc to stall no matter how hard I press. So that's it all put together, pretty simple to do and I've sanded a whole pile of wood and it works great. It's really nice having the two machines that uh, with the belt and the disc. So I've been meaning to get actual sanding machine for a while as I've just been using mainly a random orbital sander. And you can do most things with that, but this is so much quicker. It's also quieter. I think the dust collection is pretty damn good on it. Um, yeah, and it's actually a nice working height rather than hunching over a bench, pushing down a random orbital sander. To hold the workpiece to this is just more comfortable. So I don't know, sanding is just one of those horrible jobs and this is gonna make it slightly more bearable. So I've got the tool rest set up on the disc because my thinking is every time I use the disc, you're gonna want the table. Uh, with the belt though, you can obviously use it without the table and I'm not sure how much I would actually ever use the table with it. The other thing you can do is tilt up like this. Um, I'm not sure how much I use that either, but nice to have the option. So if I wanted to use the table with the belt rather than the disc, just loosening off these two Allen key headed bolts, sliding this out, sliding it here and tightening them up. So pretty quick and simple process. Um, I'm not sure there's much else to say to it. So I'll put a link down below to Machine Mart where you can get this from. Um, I'm really pleased with it. It's definitely gonna get some use. I, well, sanding is probably the one thing I do on almost every project. So I think you're gonna be seeing this a lot. So thank you to Machine Mart for this. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons and please subscribe for more videos.